Today, I'm replacing a 1.5 ton condensing unit on a rooftop. While I got the recovery machine going, I'm going to prepare this copper tubing for cutting. I pulled out four pounds, four ounces from this unit, which is right around the factory charge. If you add the 30 feet of line set or so, the unit may have been a little undercharged. Removing the disconnect and setting aside my cheater cord as I'll be using it later for the vacuum pump. I like to cut out the copper tubing when possible against sweating. It just keeps the inside of the pipes a lot cleaner. I also like to ream the inside of the pipe again when possible. I'm not going to do it if I made a cut on a uphill pipe where the shavings are just going to fall down into the pipe. Hinging at the hips while bracing the abs when removing the old condensing unit from the pad. And with the help of a dolly, I'm lifting the new condenser onto the pad. Getting my wet rag ready to protect the service valve while brazing. Then I'm going to wrap up the suction valve service valve as tight as possible with this wet rag as I want to keep it below the temperature of 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Removing the valve cores from both service ports. Hooking my hose up to one service port. The other port's gonna remain open. This is so that I can purge all the air out of the system and I can set my nitrogen flow regulator to braze while I'm brazing to keep all air oxygen out of the system. When brazing three quarter inch pipe, I try to keep a reducing flame as much as possible where I use a little bit more of oxetylene compared to oxygen. This wraps around the pipe um, a little better and it can also prevent you from putting holes in copper piping, which I have done before. For 3 8 piping, it's the same thing. I try to keep a reducing flame. I do turn the heat down just a little bit, and I don't plan on having the flame on 3 8 copper for that long. So just heat it up and then let the sill false wrap around. Well, this fitting right here is perfectly sealed. Um, this is just a preference that I like to do. I like to put a cap on this where you just put a extra little bit of silk false right where that gap is. And it just makes it look a little prettier and makes it a little stronger. The top of the welds are easy enough to see if you've got a good seal or not. I use an inspection mirror to look at the bottom of the welds to make sure that there's no holes or gaps. With the metal service cap, I'm going to cap off the other service port. Then I'm going to set my nitrogen regulator to about 2 to 250 psi to do a leak test. Smother all the braised joints with soap bubbles. I really don't like these soap bubbles, but it's all I have and they do work and it will show me if I have any micro leaks or not. Once I'm sure that there are no leaks, I'm gonna send this nitrogen back to its home into the atmosphere and get this unit ready for evacuation. Just like in all my past videos, I'll be using two 3 8 vacuum rated hoses that only see vacuum along with three APN valve core removal tools and my field piece VP67 6 CFM dual stage vacuum pump. And the reason for the third valve core removal tool that is vacuum rated is so that when I release the refrigerant I can isolate my micron gauge and not send a bunch of refrigerant through my micron gauge. Reapply power to my cheater cord. 
turn the vacuum on. I've got the ballast right now in the open position. Then I can go ahead and open up on my valve cores and start pulling down this vacuum. Once the vacuum reaches around 3000 microns, then I'm going to close down on the gas ballast on the vacuum pump. Once I reach around 500 microns, I'm going to open and close all of these valves on my valve core removal tools. And this is just to get rid of any small air pockets that might be sitting in them. Not a huge deal, but it will make your microns jump up when you do the decay test more than they need to. Got back from a quick lunch break to find double digit microns. So now it's time to do the vacuum decay test which is where we isolate the system from the vacuum pump and we check the rise of the microns over a period of 10 minutes. While the decay test is ticking down, I can go ahead and hook up this 208 volt system to the two pole contactor. And I do have plenty of wire, so I'm going to be making some brand new clean cuts on some nice fresh copper to insert into the contactor lug nuts. And this step is pretty important and it's mainly overlooked a lot and it causes a lot of burnt wires that if your connection is either too tight, which will just snap the contactor and you'll know right away, or if it's too loose. For that reason, I use a torque wrench and I torque these lugs down to about 25 inches per pound. And being very careful when hooking up the 24 volt as this is live and I don't want to short out a transformer. It has been 10 minutes and we have had a micron rise of less than 100. So this definitely passes the decay test. And this will let me sleep soundly at night knowing that the system I installed is leak free and moisture free. Next, I'm going to break vacuum by opening up the liquid valve first. The reason I'm doing the liquid valve first and not the suction is because in this install manual, it says to open up the liquid valve first. So that's what I'm doing. And in all honesty, I really don't even think it matters which one you open up first. Just do whatever the install manual says to be safe. Reapply power to the unit. And I'm going to let this run for about 10 minutes before adjusting any charge. There is about 30 to 40 feet of line set, so I will be adding a little refrigerant most likely. In the meantime, I can reinsert these valve cores. Hook up my probes with my charging port adapter to the service ports. Hook up my two temperature clamps. And hook up my amp clamp to the common wire of the compressor. I'm looking for anything greater than 50% of the run load amps, which I'm getting already. This is a TXV system, so we'll be charging by subcool, and our subcooling is a little bit low. So I will be adding some refrigerant into this system and I know it's not going to need much so I'm going to be doing it in 4 ounce increments. After about adding a pound of refrigerant I got the subcooling up to about 10 degrees which is where it's going to stay. Now it's just time to clean everything up, make sure to put the service caps back on and your valve core caps back on. Thanks so much for watching this condenser install. My name is Dave and this fix is done.